Are we going to see a huge trade between the Flames and the Leafs regarding a few defensemen going to Toronto? We'll discuss the possibilities and what we've heard about that situation so far. We also have the latest updates on Patrick Kane. Could he end up with the Florida Panthers? Plus, the Los Angeles Kings will be spending some time during next season's training camp in Quebec City featuring a couple of preseason games. And we actually have a fairly significant update as well on the 2018 Team Canada World Junior Investigation. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. We do have a variety of things to take a look at today. Some trade talk, Patrick Kane, waivers, news, and other things. But first, I want to start off talking about the big update that just came from Rick West, head of TSN, regarding the 2018 Team Canada World Junior Championship investigation that feels like it's been ongoing forever and a day now. Um, we do have a fairly... I, big update though so let's get into that first so essentially what's happened here is a press release from hockey canada and then of course rick westhead has talked about this some other reporters have chimed in as well essentially hockey canada says that findings of an investigative report on the allegations of sexual assault involving members of the 2018 world junior championship team are under appeal so essentially what's happened is um, the Hockey Canada received their what they call the final third party report in November of 2002. It was then passed on to an independent adjudicative panel, which I believe is a three member panel. Uh, they held hearings to determine if players breached the Hockey Canada code of conduct and if so, what those penalties should be. Uh, the panel then provided their final adjudicative report to all parties, including Hockey Canada, and then a request for appeal was almost filed was filed almost immediately afterwards. So it says shortly after in their report. So then the the in camera appeal uh, will begin in the very near future, but we don't know exactly what date. Uh, all players from this team remain suspended by Hockey Canada pending this appeal. So this tells us a couple of things. Essentially, uh, Hockey Canada got the report. They've put the report forth to a three uh, neutral panel. Uh, I believe it's a three-member panel. They obviously must have determined that some sanctions were justified here because if there was a case of them saying, we feel there was no wrongdoing, we want to clear them, they're certainly not going to appeal that. So obviously they feel like there at the very least here is some degree of guilt amongst some of the players. Now, if you remember back the last we had heard regarding the London Police Department uh, was that they believed uh, th this was based on information that was uh, pulled from their discussions, which I got they got from the court, was that there was reason to think that as many as five players could be facing uh, some charges. But ever since then, uh, the London Police Department has not said anything. All they will ever comment is that the investigation remains ongoing. I've heard some reporters digging deeper saying they've heard that the police department maybe doesn't feel anymore that they can move forward with charges. I don't know. But regardless of what happened here, essentially because of the appeal, there's essentially a gag order. So we will not find out until the appeal has been heard and a decision has been made on it, what's next. But assuming, because uh, Rick Westad did talk to uh, a, a legal expert, um, and they said that what they believe will happen here is that regardless, of, um, regardless and independent of what the London police choose to do, when the appeal is done, should the appeal... Now, if the appeal is successful... I do wonder if we'll ever find out who these people are, like which players was involved. I don't know that we will. They may be able to negotiate the fact that it may not come out because if they're if if they do, you know, have a successful appeal and are cleared of any wrongdoing on their part. Now, that's all completely separate and independent of any potential criminal charges from London police completely separate. Um, but if they do lose the appeal, then it's suspected. I can't say that's a hundred percent, but it's suspected at that point that hockey Canada would then make the names known and announce what their punishments are. Of course, being hockey Canada, 
They can't punish them legally. That's up to the police to do. But they can impose sanctions for either lifetime bans, several years of banning. I don't know. They can they can basically eliminate them from ever playing for their country again, things like that. I don't know what else they can do. Now, I would suspect that if they are facing big sanctions from Hockey Canada, that then you'd probably see the NHL kind of follow suit, which is, I think, why we haven't heard anything from the NHL. I think they're waiting for everything else to kind of play out here. At least that's that's just my opinion. Um, but I think the ruling will come from this, likely come first. I don't know when or if we'll hear anything from the police investigation. And then once we know this, I would suspect at that point, that's when the NHL will get involved. And then these players, if they lose the appeal, will likely be facing some sort of consequence from Hockey Canada on an international stage possibly the double IHF and then the NHL will probably rule um, as well concurrently. That, that would be my, my best guess, but because it's an appeal, it was basically a gag order. We don't know anything. And if they win the appeal, it could remain that way. If they lose the appeal, that's when we're probably going to find things out. But obviously this independent panel obviously feels that there is some degree of guilt because like I said, they're not going to appeal uh, a case of saying, yeah, no wrongdoing was, was verified here. We don't feel there's enough evidence or anything to clear them. They're not going to appeal that. So obviously something like I said, and there was the mention of five players at one point, but we don't know whatever happened to that because the London police have never said a peep about it since. So hopefully this appeal process doesn't take too terribly long and we can get a resolution on this, especially where the NHL does want to move forward with an independent, um, uh, you know, World Cup of Hockey here uh, soon, the next year or two. Like obviously, like you know, they're trying to plan a, a, the next World Cup. The next Olympics are not that far away. Like this can't drag on for too long from that perspective, because um, all these players are suspended, and I'm sure they're not all guilty, right? So we need to get the guys that are you know, deserving of punishments to face the consequences. If that's indeed, you know, what they need to do, if it's uh, justified and the ones who didn't take part and didn't have anything to do with it, then they need to be cleared. So we, I, I just hope this doesn't take too much longer because it's been dragging on forever in a day, but that's the latest update. It's the first time we've heard anything in quite some time, but now that's that. And let's jump on to the other news of the day. News from the NHL waiver wire. The Canucks forward Jack Stanika cleared waiver, so he was not picked up. He can be reassigned to Abbotsford in the American Hockey League, and they've also recalled defenseman Akito Hirose. So those are the latest moves within the Canucks organization. Uh, there's also a fairly big story today regarding um, the unfortunate death of Adam Johnson, former NHL player uh, who died in England. Uh, of course, everybody likely have heard of the story by now uh, because of getting a skate played to the neck ultimately lost his life in that incident there's a lot of people seem to be judging on whether or not the, the player did it intentionally not intentionally and there's a big divide on this uh, i see i see some people calling the guy a murderer i see some guys saying it's a freak accident everything in between but a big update on that is there's a the news came from the bbc earlier today that an arrest has been made so the player that was in question here who was involved in the incident with Adam Johnson was Matt Petgrave. Now, because of the way British law works, um, the arrest, is, uh, they didn't even name him in this article. So it says an arrest has been made in the death of Adam Johnson, and essentially it's regarding manslaughter, potential manslaughter. Obviously, I, I think you know that's what they're looking at here. But the way British law works over there is the arrest doesn't even apply guilty verdict. It just means that they're considered like what you'd call like a suspect and that they police want to talk to them and they want to gather more information from them. Um, it also prevents them from fleeing or, you know, leaving the country or anything of that nature. So they can, you know, do what they call a proper investigation. It does not automatically imply guilt. It doesn't mean that he's being charged. It just means he's being arrested for the suspicion of manslaughter and the death of Adam Johnson. Great thread of information that I shared on uh, on the X app, or formerly Twitter, uh, from an actual expert of the law 
uh, criminologist over there who broke it all down for us, essentially, because I see some people losing their minds, saying it's ridiculous that he's arrested and there's a freak accident. It's like, okay, well, you got to understand how it all works. It's like, you know, it's just to, to, to investigate and to, you know, question him. So we'll see whatever comes from this. Uh, but it is possible that um, it could even be settled behind closed doors and, and may not even become public. It could be on, dragging on for several months or even years before we even know the potential outcome. But they, the indication was that the, the uh, law enforcement people in the local area were working with what they call like subject matter experts um, and kind of looking into this. And, and really, if you think about it, it's not unusual for somebody to be questioned, arrested and questioned when there's an unusual um, unexpected death of that nature. So that's all that's going on, but an arrest has been made. It's a pretty big, important development, and we will see what comes from it. As I mentioned, the Los Angeles Kings are going to be spending part of next year's training camp in Quebec City. Uh, there is an incentive from the Quebec provincial government to uh, to do this as well. They're obviously paying uh, the Kings in order to come put on some games, essentially. So uh, they suspect, obviously, they're going to sell a lot of tickets and they'll obviously recoup some of that money. But it's believed to be between 5 and $7 million dollars uh, the kings are expected to spend about a week of next year's training camp in la belle province in quebec city uh, they are going to have two exhibition games uh, one against the boston bruins and one against the florida panthers of course quebec city is the home of patrice bergeron it's unfortunate he's not playing anymore um, but of course i'm sure he'll more than likely be in attendance with his uh, bruins being in his hometown to play a, an exhibition game so uh, certainly Nice to see Quebec City getting some NHL action. They have the NHL arena all ready to go. They've been wanting an NHL team for a long time. For a variety of reasons, the NHL has been hesitant to go back there. I do kind of understand the rationale and reasons as to why, but I do think it would thrive there. Um, and we'll see if they ever can get that team back. But at least nice to see at the very least that there's going to be a couple of games uh, in early October next year for some preseason action. Uh, another update as well from NHL player safety. Oilers center Leon Drysaddle has been fined $5,000 for what they're calling a dangerous trip regarding uh, a situation with Bo Horvat last night in the New York Islanders. Uh, it was, call it a dangerous trip, it was more like a cross-check, but when Drysaddle cross-checked, Horvat from behind, it was more like he really got down low and got him almost like in the back of the legs. Like it was like in the upper part of the legs, kind of almost near his behind, if you will, and took him out and fell down pretty hard. So I'm not surprised at all to see a fine. It was a dirty, dangerous play, definitely justified. I don't think Leon really cares. The Oilers got the win in their first game with a new head coach, and they got the two points, which is all that matters for, for their part. Ultimately, like I said, it was a dirty play, and he does deserve some punishment. So that's that's that. Of course, last night as well was Hockey Hall of Fame night. Uh, we saw the the induction. We already knew who, of course, who all the induction uh, you know players and builders were, including uh, you know the star of the class, Henrik Lundqvist. It was a bit of a goalie night. Besides Lundqvist, of course, you saw longtime goalies Tom Barrasso, Mike Vernon be inducted, uh, Pierre Turgeon, Carolyn Willette. Uh, and of course, as well, as well as some builders, including Ken Hitchcock. So it was a great evening. Nice to see all the well-deserved, uh, you know, people be inducted here. There's some great speeches as well. Uh, so certainly, I personally think they should almost make uh, more of a bigger deal of Hockey Hall of Fame night and maybe not schedule any games and make a bigger event out of it. Uh, obviously, they had all kinds of other Hall of Famers and alumni on hand. Uh, they do make a pretty big deal out of the event. I just think it could be something that gets more... Uh, more television, you know, uh, access and more hoopla that way to kind of promote it more. Um, I think it should be more done that way and maybe, you know, have don't have games on or, or schedule the games so that you have a couple of hours gap or something so you can just promote the, the event more because obviously these, these are big people that promoted the game a lot. It'd be just nice to see them get a little bit more acknowledgement. Uh, the Calgary Flames have reassigned Dustin Wolf back down to the minors. Uh, so obviously Markstrom is good to go. Wolf had a little bit of action. Didn't go well against the Senators, but uh, he's you know still very much looked upon as being the goalie of the future there. Doesn't really have much to accomplish left for the NHL. I'm sure the Flames are going to want to get him back up as soon as they can. And Kyle Poso, Sabres captain, longtime NHLer, is set to play in game number 1,000 tonight. That's quite a big mile. So I want to acknowledge that. Uh, congratulate him. Uh, Ocposo has been through a lot over the course of his career. Uh, missed some time due to injuries. Had you know different head injuries. Uh, he's gone through a lot. Uh, so the fact that he's 
uh, held on and pushed his career this far is a great uh, accomplishment. Certainly something that uh, not a lot of NHL players do. Uh, so certainly want to acknowledge that and congratulate him on that. Apparently there's also some GM meetings ongoing as well. Elliot Friedman was reporting from the meetings that a lot of discussions around potential modifications to the overtime format. They talked about a variety of things. Nothing's really going to come from it now, but essentially just to kind of get how uh, the feel for a few things and then they kind of table those for the next meeting which won't be till spring and march um but looking at either extending overtime to 10 minutes uh they talked about the possibility of uh maybe having a shot clock or even having a situation where once you cross center or into the offensive zone over the blue line that you can't go back out or if you do you lose possession i think the big thing that they're looking at and i've heard this from a variety of places even um even the american hockey league uh, President Scott Housen has mentioned this, that maybe you set it up so that once you attack, that you, you can't just bail out. Because you see NHL players do that a lot. They'll enter the zone ready to attack. They don't like, like what they see. So they exit the zone and they regroup. And it does eat up a lot of the clock, which I understand why it's a great strategy. You don't want to lose the puck. But at the same time, um, I guess the NHL wants you know more more action and it does kind of slow the game down so we'll see if anything comes from it like doesn't mean anything will but all those ideas that were kind of discussed now will be discussed further in the springtime uh patrick kane according to elliot freeman one of the biggest uh, teams and gms going after this guy is bill zito and the florida panthers i know i seem to be getting a mixed reaction from panther fans online uh whether or not they want kane to join their squad i know kane uh, you know, obviously a heck of a career could be a great addition, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to mess with a good thing either. They've, you know, they had a little bit of a slow start to the season, but they've really found their groove lately. Uh, they have uh, Ekblad and Montour returning in the next couple of weeks. And same, same with uh, Sam Bennett, who's been in and out with a couple of injuries this year already. You know, do you want to add a guy like Kane? They wouldn't be able to offer a lot based on salary cap without moving out another player first. So it's, tricky to see what they're going to do but uh, it'd be interesting to see we've heard other teams dallas buffalo detroit toronto all mentioned um but according to friedman the panthers are the team that's pushing the hardest so be curious to see when we hear more on the latest uh, on that situation and will we see a big trade involving the leafs and the flames uh some new information from elliot friedman today uh, speculates that during the flames and leafs games a few days ago that one of the leaf players said to nikita zadorov you're exactly what we need on our team. And there's belief that the Leafs have tabled an offer uh, to the Flames. I don't know, can't say this is 100% true, but there is some speculation that they've made an offer and they're letting the Flames kind of think it over while they're in Sweden. And by the time they return from Sweden and get ready to get back into action is when they kind of want to know where things are at. Uh, but it's believed Brad Trilling at the very least would like to get Zadorov, if not Zadorov and Tanev both. Um, obviously we know Trey living knows these players. Well, of course he was, a, you know, involved with bringing them to the flames organization. He has got a couple of uh, defensemen on the Leafs that he worked with for a long time as well, with Giordano and Brody. Uh, it's hard to say exactly how they would do this deal. If that's indeed the case, um, you know, the flames could look at retaining salary on both of these players or one or both to make it a little bit easier cap wise, but the Leafs would definitely have to have at least one roster player come off the books for sure. Um, there's speculation as well that from Eric Francis that one of the players that the Flames would be most interested in would be uh, prospect Nick Abruzzese. Uh He, of course, was teammates and a line mate and setup man for uh, young prospect Matt Coronado with the Flames, uh, of course, uh, who's now in the minors after having a decent start to the, the campaign and it was a brief NHL career so far. But, of course, they played together at Harvard, uh, were a great duo, it would make a lot of sense that they might try to bring him in for the two to play together at the NHL level. Uh, again, I know I see a lot of people speculating that if this kind of trade went down, it would have to be TJ Brody going back to the Flames. I don't know for sure that they'd want to do that. I mean, Brody and Riley probably been two of their better defensemen. But I know from a cap perspective, they just can't add these two bodies without subtracting. Um, it's hard to say exactly what they would do in that case. But at the end of the day, somebody, at least one, if not two, would have to go depending on retained salary or whatnot on the deal. So I'll be curious to see what the what plays out here. Uh, Elliot Friedman had mentioned back, I think about a week ago on his podcast, saying that he knows that Tree Living for sure has interest in Zadorov and that he, if he could get both of these guys, including Tanev, 
that he would probably really like to do that. But it's just a matter of how do they do that and what kind of deal are they waiting on to hear from the Flames. I'd be curious to see. Um, they're not going to do anything too crazy. Obviously, they'd like to sign Nylander. They're not going to trade him as well as he's been playing this year. He's been on fire. Uh, at this point, Nylander's new contract is probably going to be $11 million or more the way he's playing. I mean, it's going to be very complicated for them to keep him for sure, but that's a, that's a problem for another day right now. Um, you know, would they move a player like Yarncroak or Brody or would they try to talk Calgary into taking Klingberg since that project hasn't worked out well? I don't know. I believe Klingberg does have at least, uh, I believe a modified no trade out to check cap friendly, but I'm pretty sure he does have some protection in there. So that could complicate things as well. So we'll see, but it's believed the Leafs are interested. There's an, an offer that they're waiting for Calgary to decide. We will see if that's true. They're obviously in Sweden. Now they, uh, all the teams in Sweden play a couple of games between like Thursday to Sunday and then they have a few days off to travel back and get reacclimated to North American time and get back home. So it could be a week, week and a half before we really hear, you know, for sure anything further on this and what could come from it. But let me know your thoughts on this and all the other news today. It's been an action packed video with all kinds of big news today. So let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. 